Welcome everybody to the Black Belt Mindset Transformation Show, where every day, Monday to Friday, we give you mindset training and diet transformation to help you transform your life. I'm your host, Jason Reed, and on today's show, we're gonna get into training. Uh, we're going to have my son, fifth degree black belt, uh, world sparring champion, Spencer Reed. He's going to help us along with his training, what he does, and then kind of go through what I talked in the beginning about how to set up your training. So we're going to start off each and every day with our mindset first. So the first part before we get into the planning is we talk about sometimes about gratitude, growth, and giving. Today it's about gratitude. What are you truly thankful for today? Today it's snowing here in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's on a Tuesday when we had uh, classes canceled yesterday and today. We're opening our classes up at the academy tonight, so we have about 15 minutes to shoot this video to help get our students up to their best level. But specifically planning, and so I'm just grateful that we have students ready to go. I'm uh, grateful also that we're not snowed in. We have power. Uh, back in 1998, I believe it was, we had a major snowstorm where we were locked in and lost all the power in Lincoln, so I'm thankful that we have power today. In a day like this, we're thankful we have heat. 100, 200 years ago, they didn't have the things we have now. So I am so thankful to have heat. Um, and so that's the question of the day. What are you thankful for? In the comments below, tell me one of the things that you're thankful in your life, whether it's your past, what you're thankful for right now, or something you could be thankful for in the future. You could also write, tell me a relationship in your life that's been important to you, that's changed your life. So again, leave a note down in the description below. So. Um, before we get started here with yesterday's video, which you haven't, uh, if you haven't got to check it out, check it out. I think there's a link up over here to check out that video from yesterday. It's all about planning, how to plan your best week out. But if you haven't watched, I'm going to go through quickly on how to focus your training or the questions you should ask before you begin your planning training week. Now, a lot of people go, well, I need to do something. And I go, well, that's better than nothing. But once you get started, you want to have specific goals and strategies and understand why you're doing what you're doing. If you just go willy-nilly and go walk or lift weights without a real reason of what you're doing, you're gonna get nowhere because you're not gonna get the benefits of it and you're really not gonna get the value you're looking from it. So some questions to ask before you get started. What type of movement categories are you trying to improve? Are you trying to improve a, start a movement like walking, running, swimming, some type of movement, general movement to get you started? Are you working on a skill set? I teach martial arts and that falls in that category. Is there a skill set that you wanna improve on? This is not about getting stronger, faster, which we'll get into in a second, but something, a skill set that you want to improve on. This is an area right now where I'm probably focusing more of my attention to than I am to the other two categories. So you have movement first, then you have skill set. Third one is strength and power and speed. They all kind of go together, but it's getting stronger, getting more explosive, getting some way to get a better contraction of the muscle. Now, broad, that's kind of a broad category to go even smaller in depth. You have strength, which is how heavy you can lift on something or how hard you can do. You have power, which is that with speed. And then you have speed, which is how fast you can accelerate into something. And these are three different aspects that are all important to keep improving. The fourth one is flexibility, mobility, and range of motion. This could fall underneath the yoga category or tai chi, something to that effect. But those are four different things all this could be working on. What's the right thing for you? You have to decide what that is. For me, the movement drill, I don't do a lot of running, walking. I do what I normally do. So that's kind of a lower level for me. That might be not the right thing for you. Some of those youth in there like to run, who like to do exercise outside. Perfect for you guys. Skill set, that's my priority right now in my life at this time. What's yours? Um, I also want to keep improving my strength and flexibility and my speed and power. So I'm going to keep working on those things. But at the same time, I'm going to involve martial arts training every single day for me without overdoing it. I found that consistency for martial arts and skill sets is more important than just doing it every other day. Now, I add strength and power and flexibility into this. So I stretch every day, twice a day. This is what I do. And then I have a strength-based thing where I do a push, a pull, and a leg every three days. So that's what I do with my week. Now, before we begin, you have to figure out, what is your highest priority of those? Can you work all these in? Should you work one of these in? Again, I'm not trying to overthink you, but what's going to give you the biggest bang for the buck? If you're going to spend 30 minutes each day or an hour each day, what do you want to spend time doing? I'd want to spend some time that gets you the real benefits of what you're really looking for. Um, the second thing you want to look at besides those questions is what's most important to you? Now, at different times in my life, there's been different things that's been more important. For many people who start training, it's how do I look? How do I look in a swimsuit, getting ready for a wedding? How do I look on that type of thing? As you get older, you care a little bit less about that. Um, how you feel and then how you perform. How I feel right now is my highest priority each day. At 48 years old, I wanna feel good each day and feel like I can do the things I wanna do. But I still wanna keep my performance improving. So for me at my age, performance and how I feel matters far more than how I look. 
And so again, you have to ask yourself, what is the most important thing for you at your age, at your life right now? And then the last part is what event, what cycle you're at, and what stage you're at. That will help you decide how you work each week. So that's my strategy to kind of get you started. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to introduce my son here. He's fifth degree world Tiger Rock sparring champion, Mr. Spencer E. Let's welcome him in here. Hello, hello. So uh, we just got done talking. I know you probably listened a little bit here about what the ideas and training to focus on. Um, but just if you wouldn't mind, maybe give like two minutes of what training is like growing up. One, having it with a dad who teaches martial arts. But just what got you into it, what got you started, and then like get us up till right now and make two or three minutes or so. Thankfully, I've had a really weird journey in my training. I've probably dabbled in just about everything. Um, I had an innate desire as a kid for a lot of just like specific things. Like growing up, probably my first real training advice was um, looking better. I didn't like how much I, how much belly I had at the time, and it was honestly like fourth grade when I came to my dad with that. And I'd already been doing taekwondo for a while, but it wasn't. I mean, you're in you're in elementary school. You're not like trying to be the world's best spar or anything at that point in time so um it, that was the first time where I really had like an interest in anything that I was training for I was just I, before that just training to train but then you kind of figure out your first thing that you're excited to get better at and so we did I think four or five days a week there were like an hour we would just be in the basement you'd watch football and you'd tell me what to do and then I'd be sweating buckets by the end of the workout and it'd just be a lot of running up and down stairs kettlebell swings push-ups you're just your basic stuff but I mean also at the big point of it is doing something is better than doing nothing. So even though we had just a basement and stairs, we still got really hard workouts in. And I think that's a big point is that doing something is better than doing nothing, even if it's not complete. And that's the big thing with me right now is um, I've gone through a lot of different types of training, but I'm kind of at the point in my life where most of my training has been performance-based, but now I'm kind of at the point where I need to make sure I'm taking care of my body just as well. So lately, my biggest training has been towards joint mobility and strength. So being able to kind of handle the pressures of the performance that I want to do. You're, you can deadlift 500 pounds, but that doesn't mean your body is able to handle that much weight just because your muscles can. So I've been hitting performance for a long time. I did track and field really hard on my knees. I've done football. That was hard on everything. Taekwondo has been hard on everything. Um, and weightlifting, powerlifting has also been really hard on my body. So a lot of performance-based stuff that's gotten me to excel in a lot of areas for certain things, but at that same time now I'm 23 and I'm kind of catching up in a more healthy aspect rather than just performance-based. So there's two different types of training going on. So that's probably the biggest and most important one is making sure that I can train my body to handle the training I want to put it under through the next decade or so, however long I can go. So. That's really the big thing. The other thing besides that is explosiveness and a little bit of cutting down. I'm, I don't need to cut down too much. I'm pretty small already, but just losing anything excess and replacing it with just lean, explosive, quick twitch muscle fibers instead. So that is kind of the big idea right now for getting ready for the tournament this July. Maybe March. So kind of talking specifically, I love what you said. That gives everybody kind of an idea of where you're at. Um, specific events you have coming up. So you talked about March coming up. That's uh, pre-evaluation. So there's some conditioning and there's a tournament involved there. Yep. So, and then in July, which is the big boy thing, that's what the really, you know, you're shooting for the moon on that one. Mm -hmm. You're going for it. Um, how do you cycle your training? I'll kind of talk a little bit before just to kind of explain in cycles of training. If you just push on whether it's speed or explosiveness or conditioning or technique, you can overdo one. How do you cycle your training throughout that? We're in January now, so that gives you about three months to cycle for you. How do you ramp yourself up? Um, it, it took a little bit of learning and habit building at first. For a long while, I would have to just go over my goals every month or every two months um, and see where I'm at and see what needs fixed up next. But now it's kind of at the point where like, I'm always constantly thinking, okay, wh what things do I need to fix? And uh, so I, it's a, it could become a habitual thought that I think about all the things that I need to work on and get better at at this point. So goal setting, routine goal setting is the biggest initial thing you need to do is just making sure it's a routine of checking up every two to four weeks or however long seeing what your progress has been seeing what things have gone down in that time what you need to evaluate and change for the next coming two months so um, you, prior it was uh, about eight to twelve week cycles where I would go through a lifting program that'd be kind of based towards one specific thing whether it be like explosiveness or bodybuilding or whatever it may be and then just as your goals and your wants and desires kind of move through that eight to twelve weeks and how the eight to 12 weeks actually goes just kind of makes you want different things through the next eight to 12 weeks. So it's, it's a lot of 
building, changing, and fixing, and you have to just keep constantly doing that. But if you can't do that right now, you have to just start forcing it probably every two to four weeks at least, making sure you're looking at your goals, seeing what you need to do different. But eventually it becomes a habit, and it becomes something you can't live without, figuring out what you got to do better. I love it, love it. Uh, getting ready for that, so things they would peak on. So generally when you get ready for these events, um, like for example, now is January. So for example, if I was getting ready for an event in July or whether it's March, you have basically three months, which is approximately, you know, you figure about four weeks a month, that's 12, 13 weeks apart, you knew that. Do you go straight through and go ramp up or do you go like three weeks and then down through up three weeks? Many people just, and again, I'm not saying what you should do, but a lot of people will do foundational stuff for the first three to four weeks in strength building, drop that down, then more speed and explosiveness. How do you do it or do you just do all of it at the same time? It's mostly the first part um, a lot of it but I also the, a lot of it is just figuring it out as I go to so generally speaking I like if I have a tournament in March I will probably train for three four months leading up to maybe like a month before that event um, for specific things so like right now it would be explosive so getting ready for July I should say um, getting ready for July my biggest things are mobility and explosiveness and that'll probably keep working on that until probably a month, month and a half, maybe two months before the tournament, and then I'll kind of do a big evaluation of, okay, I've done really good at this. What are some of the more important things I need to focus now? And that's when I start getting really technical. So it's a lot of, like you said, foundation building. And then as you get a little bit closer, figuring out what specific things you need to nail on the head exactly for a little while. So it's a lot of that, but then it's also at the same time, like if I have an idea in the middle of my cycle, I'm, and I think it's going to be something, or someone gives me a piece of advice or whatever, maybe I need to be able to adapt and be able to make my training even better. So I always have a general consensus idea of how I'm going to build up and ramp up. And then once I get to that last month, I really just make everything as perfect as possible. But also at the same time, you have to be ready to deal with different things happening, whether maybe an injury or you getting sick or some training advice is not going right or some you need to change and make a little bit better, whatever it may be. Um, you always have to be able to adapt and move too. Love it, love it. Um, last question here to get through. Give everybody kind of an overview of your workout strategy for the week. What is generally what you do right now? How many days of strength training, martial arts, flexibility? Kind of give everybody like a one, two minute overview of what we got. On a perfect week where I'm feeling good and I can make everything happen, life obviously gets in the way sometimes, but perfect week is four lifting sessions a week, uh, four to five, five if you're going crazy. Um, but I also like to go crazy on my Taekwondo right now. And like I said, the mobility and explosiveness is a little bit more important to me. So I've taken it from five, six days down to four days. So that way I can fit more Taekwondo training and more personal mobility training in as well too. So generally four lifting days a week, three to about three classes a week, top classes at the academy and then usually two more, maybe three more Taekwondo personal workouts on my own, um, stretching and going through range of motions every single day, um, whether it's a lot or whether I only get to do a couple things, like I said before, something is better than nothing. So with a busy life, you kind of just have to make whatever happen happen. So if I get done with the Taekwondo class and I haven't done any stretching that day, I kind of have to force it in then. So it's I generally have a planned idea of how many workouts I want to get done in my week and when my schedule is pretty routine, I can pick specific days, but they also got to be ready to just kind of fit in things if they don't work sometimes. So everyone has an adult life nowadays. <laughs> Welcome to the real world. Sometimes you can't squeeze them in. And so the other thing is just for you to keep in mind that you're going to have days you don't get a workout in. Don't beat yourself up. Don't, you know, if you're sick or tired, take a day to rest. It's one of the things I had to learn as well too. So um, before we wrap this up, any uh, recommendations or things for people at home? Biggest recommendation for your goals is just finding what your why. And I feel like it's one of those things that I've personally heard a lot growing up is like, know your why. And uh, you can know your why, but it's actually wanting your why too. Like someone can tell you, you need to work on your explosiveness in Taekwondo, but unless you really desire it or you really desire to like lose weight or whatever it may be, it's gonna be hard kind of sticking with anything. So whether it's Taekwondo or losing weight, find your love in what it is, find your love in Taekwondo, find your love in fixing your form and doing your form 20 times a day, find your love in doing 15 rounds of two minute long sparring rounds, even though that's ridiculous, find your thing and find your, find a genuine why, not just a why to tell yourself what you're doing it for. You can tell yourself anything, but until you love the reason why you're doing it and putting yourself through whatever it is, it's going to be really hard to stick with it. So that's my big 
advice for the day. <laughs> love it, love it. All right, we got to wrap it up. We have classes coming up in here in a couple minutes. Uh, do me a couple quick favors. Number one, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up that you like it. Uh, leave a uh, leave a comment below. What is your why? What are the things that you're focused on? I told you mobility, skill sets, my most focused one, We're trying to work on strength. His obviously is speed and explosiveness. What's yours? Is it fat loss? Is it strength? You want to get better technical skills? Do you want to improve your running? Write down below. Tell us your goals. And then again, check us out each and every day. We have mindset, training, diet, nutrition. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next show.